or welcome back to my channel Stitch and Style by me Nadia and today I'm going to give you a little bit of an update on what I have been up to and what I've got planned and I'm also going to do an unboxing of my Guthrie and Garney sewing kit which is the cardigan in the zigzag fabric and I'll put the unboxing at the end in case you wanted to finish the video before I did my unboxing but hopefully you'll enjoy seeing what I got in the kit. Now when I last spoke to you I was showing you how far I'd got with the Vogue dress which is Vogue 1934 and I've now finished the dress and I think it is absolutely beautiful. I've not got pictures of it yet but hopefully I'm going to get some snaps of me wearing this today and I'll be able to insert them and hopefully give you a twirl in it. The only thing that I was a little bit disappointed about was I made it a little bit shorter than I wanted. I did go as small as possible with the hem to try and keep as much of the length as possible but if I made it again I would have perhaps lengthened the skirt piece. I am probably going to make this dress again. I absolutely love it. It's very similar to the NYX dress and I love that dress too. That's a tiered skirt. I think I do prefer the skirt on the NYX dress which is why I've done a gathered skirt on this. The as the patterns designed this dress, there is supposed to be um, a placket all the way down the front. So you've got buttons all the way down the front. Now, I've not done that version on any of my three dresses that I've made, but I do actually fancy trying that version. So I would go for the longer skirt and maybe the short sleeves in like a cotton fabric for the summer. I think that would look absolutely gorgeous and I'm going to try that. Um, next season but for the winter I've made this version which is in this grey black and off-white animal print fabric from Guthrie and Garney and it's a viscose twill it's absolutely lovely the only issue is is that it does have it does kind of run you kind of get pulls in the fabric um, but I'm not too bothered about that. That's just some fabric that happens even with a sharp needle or a microtex needle. It sometimes happens and I'm not too bothered about it. I absolutely love this fabric. It's really nice. It's going to look lovely with some black boots and tights. And I made the long sleeve version. I hacked the sleeves on this version. So on the original it has a cuff with two little buttons on and rouleau loops and instead I just went for an elasticated sleeve. I've kept the volume in the sleeve, all I did was lengthen it. I didn't actually lengthen it as much as I wanted to because I wanted to have the ruffle like in the Davenport dress so you have a channel for the elastic and then a ruffle and I did sew it like that. I tried it on and I thought no the sleeves are just slightly too short so I undid it all and took out the ruffle just put the elastic in and yes it's kind of the length that I wanted it so I had to redo that part. Now while I was making this I had red thread in my overlocker and I didn't want to change it so I decided to French seam the inside of this garment and the only bit that I couldn't French seam because of the zip was the centre back seam on the skirt piece. So I had to zigzag that and I pinked it for good measure um, but that is the only place where I've not French seamed. I French seamed um, the armholes and it's fully burritoed in the inside. So that's the front seam and that's the back seam. And I finished the waistband as you should, stitching in the ditch. As you'll see there, I actually used white thread for my bobbin. I used grey thread for the top, but I had white thread in my bobbin 
only because I was between threads and I didn't want to interrupt my flow and wind another bobbin. I was being very lazy and I was at that point I was doing the gathering stitches for the waistband and the sleeves so I thought I could just do those in white because they're going to be coming out anyway. Yes I shouldn't have been lazy and I should have changed my thread but only I'm ever going to see um, my the inside but it's nice to have nice insides and I had another one of these rose coloured pull but black um, invisible zips from Sherwoods that I used for the zip. I added four covered buttons to the bodice. Normally you've got three as it's drafted but I like an extra one just to make it a little bit higher and the Rulo loops and I'm just overall just absolutely thrilled with this new dress. I'm already excited about when I can wear this dress. It is one of the contenders for what I'm going to wear next week at the Knitting and Stitching show in Harrogate and I'm going on the Saturday and I'm going with two friends and my sister and that's going to be really exciting and I'm hopefully going to meet up with a couple of other people who've got in touch that said that they're going on the Saturday and would like to meet and that's going to be really exciting to meet them too so hopefully I'll be so busy chatting that I won't actually spend too much money I've already spent a little bit of what I was saving for the listening and stitching show um so yeah I'm going to have to be uh, good as gold when I get there but we'll wait and see what I find. So that was the first thing that I finished this week. I then made this top here, this pink Freya top. Um, the Freya top is a Tilly and the Buttons top and it's just a nice mock roll neck in one of my favourite colours, pink and I'm wearing it underneath this ermine blouse. Now I think I might not have talked about this blouse on my channel because it might have been while I was on a little bit of a break from YouTube. I can't remember what I've talked about and what I haven't. I will just quickly mention some of the details on this make and the most exciting thing about this make is the fact that I've used the lovely Becky, What Beck Sews, I've used her buttons which are jazz and wow because I made this while I was at the sewing social in Staffordshire. Becky was there with her buttons and I was able to pick out the absolute perfect buttons. I mean if Becky had actually made it to match this fabric they couldn't have matched any better. Um, yeah and they're exactly the right size, exactly the right colours and I will show you up close. So, so you can see here they're half pink and half green and a little bit um, translucent as well and the little resin buttons and lovely quality and just the perfect size and the perfect colours as you can see it just goes so well just look at that it practically disappears into the blouse <laughs> i'm also wearing jazz and wow earrings um in a pink and red i think they're pink and red anyway yeah pink and red i think pink on one side red on the other and slightly see-through as well so i'm not actually finished this top <laughs> because i'm not finished um i've not actually hemmed it yet i tried to hem it um, on the sleeve and I was getting skipped stitches so I thought no it doesn't look good enough so I unpicked it and I'm going to have them mess around with the settings maybe change my needle um, or maybe use a twin needle if I, I can be bothered <laughs> so um, yeah I've not done that yet but I wanted we were going out for breakfast this morning and I wanted to wear something nice and bright and colourful. So I decided to put these two on together. And I'm very pleased with how it looks. I've got this um, little belt on and a pair of jeans. Um, and I was wearing my cardigan earlier, but it's nice and warm. I put the heating on, so um, I didn't actually need another layer. 
but that cardigan and I'll pop a picture of my full outfit is absolutely lovely I really like it you could make something very similar um, using the Marlowe cardigan pattern um, but that is actually ready to wear um, and I've absolutely loved wearing that cardigan it gets a lot of wear I have dipped my sleeve a few times in food so it's had to um, undergo a little bit of washing and some stain removal but it's held up quite well and it looks um it looks okay i've not really been sharing some of the alteration projects that i've been doing um i do do quite a lot of alteration projects if there's something that's not quite right on a garment i like to change it up so one of the things that i've actually planning on doing is i made this little um vest top which i drafted myself in the cozy colors um and considering I drafted it myself, <laughs> it's not quite long enough, so it's um, it comes up a little bit short on me. I like the width of it. Um, I like everything about it, except yeah, it's just a little bit too short. It. I don't want you to kind of when I wear it. I don't want you to kind of see my bottom um, garment, a belt. I normally wear a belt, and and then some. Uh, the material above the belt before my um, top stops. I would like it just to kind of sit on my belt, um, really. So I need to add a couple of centimetres, maybe an inch or something, to the bottom. And somebody suggested adding a waistband to it, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add a waistband to this little top and hopefully then I'll be able to wear it without feeling either it doesn't look quite right or um, just leaving it in the drawer. The other thing that I want to get done is I want to change this dress that I made a couple of weeks ago. Um, and if you watch that vlog, you'll know it was a little bit unhappy because I've got a seam line down the back and not quite happy with how this looks and I want to change this into an Elysian bodysuit by Friday Pattern Company I've decided that's what I'm going to change this into so I've got to get cutting up with this and make one of those I have got quite a bit of this material left so whatever I can't get out of this then I'll just get out of them um, the fabric I've got left but I do want to cut this up into parts and there's quite a lot of material in here because there's quite a long skirt on it so I should be able to get most of the bodysuit cut out of this dress so that's another plan that I've got in terms of an alteration but I've got another exciting project planned so what I want to do is I want to make a Ava skirt. I think I'm going to make the Ava skirt. I was debating between that and the tulip skirt, but I think I'm going to do the Ava because it's a little bit slimmer fitting. Although I do like the nipped in waistband and then the volume and the bottom of the tulip skirt. Oh, it's going to be a close one. And I want to make a cocoa jacket, which is by Sew Over It. So it's just um, a cropped jacket which is fully lined and the bodice is done in three pieces at the front and two at the back I think that's how it's done so that's where the shaping comes from and it looks a lovely pattern I really wanted like a little matching outfit and the fabric is absolutely divine so I'll just get it so this is the fabric that I want to use and it's from Jenny Stitches so it's a jacquard and you can see it's got like olive green purple and it's got like a pink in it which really shimmers and shines um, it's got a little bit of a, like a metallic sheen to it so oh it's absolutely gorgeous this fabric and um, yeah it's quite stiff and definitely structured so you'd have to make something quite structured with this fabric so I think a matching skirt and jacket for this 
and it's going to be beautiful. Hopefully I've got enough to cut both a skirt and a jacket out of it. Actually that's maybe why I probably need to do the Avo, it probably takes up less material. So we might do, I might do that. Actually I just want to mention two vlogs. Going back to the Staffordshire Social, um, my lovely friend Sally has recently started vlogging and she's put up her first vlog and I really recommend checking it out. At the same time, her good friend and my friend Ruth um, also started vlogging and she's also released her first vlog and they released them at the same on the same day at the same time which I thought was really good because then they could support each other and um, both are brilliant vlogs. What reminded me of the Ava skirt as well was Ruth was talking about the Ava skirt. She had a little bit of an issue with the waistband, which I think I had as well. I know the first one I made was too small on the waistband. And I think I just cut it longer um, because I didn't want to reprint the whole pattern out. So I think actually I might have had the same issue that she had. So. One of the things that she mentioned maybe doing was putting an invisible zip in it rather than um, a normal zip and then having a crossover on the waistband and putting um, a hook and eye was to do an invisible zip. That's how the tulip skirt is finished. So I think I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to put an invisible zip up the back. And yeah, I got one out of my stash, which it's nice bright pink but I think it kind of like blends in. Um, the pink's not coming up actually, it's looking very purple on there but in real life you can really see the shines of the pink um, in it. I'm just a little bit unsure about what to line this with. I think I'm going to want slippy sleeves so I've got some black lining fabric and I'll probably use that. I would have liked a bright pink lining but I don't have any bright pink lining in my stash and I don't want to have to wait until more fabric arrives um, before I start making this because I want to get this started today. Um, I think it's going to look brilliant at Christmas time. So that's going to be my next project. Now I'm sorry this is going <laughs> to be quite a long vlog but I now I'm going to open my Guthrie and Garney Sewing Society kit box so it comes in a big box like this i've not actually opened oops i've not actually opened this box yet let's have a look i think it's because the material is quite bulky so just open the box and um this is the first bit that's in there. I think this is the ribbing material and the pattern. So the pattern is the Sable Boyfriend Knit Cardi and I chose sizes 10 to 22. I've not looked at the sizes yet so I can't tell you what size I'm going to do for certain but I'll probably either do the 12 or the 14 size cardigan. I want it kind of oversized. I'll probably just go with what my measurements are Bearing in mind that I do have a dressmaker's eight and a half cup, so I tend to go off my upper bust measurement rather than my bust measurement for picking a size. And my hip is normally one or two sizes bigger than my bust measurement and my waist measurement. This is what Lauren has given us for um, the cuffs and the waistband. I think, does it have a waistband? No, maybe it just has, no, a neckband and the cuffs. I'm not 100% sure, <laughs> I can't remember. But it's this is a lovely fleeced back. Yeah, it's it's got a lovely fleece back there. Um, and it's in a navy blue. There's not much stretch that way, but I assume there's gonna be plenty of stretch and recovery that way yeah this the, the, there's enough stretch and recovery that way um so that's lovely and we get some knit black interfacing 
So everything we need to make the kit. I've not actually seen the fabric yet. Oh, let's get the buttons, I think. Oh, the fabric's lovely. Um, so this also comes in this little package, which says Notions. We get a navy blue Gutterman thread. Some Jersey needles by Prim and oh you get 70 80 and 90 sizes we get a label and this is kind of one of the garments that i might put a label in because i wouldn't normally have the cardigan sitting against my skin well maybe if i wore a low back top or something but um get a little me made label that's really cute and it's the same on both sides so you can it's fully reversible next up are these buttons they've got four holes and they're pigeon wishes so and you can see that they've got like a dark blue in them um, with little bits of light blue and they're absolutely beautiful really nice quality buttons so I'm just going to pop those in there because I don't want to lose any of those and now for the fabric I think it's part wool part viscose um, I'll put the composition actually just down here um, and I had to go for the pink definitely so it's got this mustard colour in which actually is not really my colour but I'm what I'm going to try and do when I um cut out the fabric i'm going to try and put this like as far away as from my face as possible so i might have it like that at the top so that would be like the shoulder seam there and then i'll have it like a bit further down so these colors which i think are a little bit more kind of cooler colors which are more kind of the kind of colors that i that look better next to my face i'm going to try and put those up at the top and then that a bit further down i mean look at that purple color that is just absolutely lovely i just love that color and we've got this light blue and um maroon color and it's very thick and kind of a squishy fabric it's going to be so toasty and while you're working at home you don't want to have your heating on full blast and you're just but you're just sat at your desk without moving around too much so you need something nice and warm and as i've talked about before i don't really wear many coats so this could be a good kind of coatigan kind of thing to wear i am going to go for the longer version i think but i don't know whether to make up a shorter version with some gray fabric that i've got first just to test out the pattern but i think i'm going to be fine lauren at the same time she sends you a link i think to um a sew along now i have bought one of the kits before which was for the next dress and i didn't watch actually the sew along video <laughs> which i probably should have done because i think they contain lots of handy hints and tips and things and if lauren thinks that there's a better way to do things then she'll tell you what those are so I'm going to have to definitely watch her sew along and get some hints and tips before I make this up. But I'm so excited about making this. This is going to jump to like the top of my list, really. I think, but I think I'm going... Oh, and wouldn't the um, skirt that I'm going to make just go really nicely with this cardigan? That's going to look a very nice little combination, I think. Oh, that just goes together so nicely, doesn't it? How exciting. Yes, so I've got lots of exciting things to do. And thanks so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed talking to you and updating you. And I appreciate you taking the time to tune in and listen to me. And... If you're going to the Knitting and Stitching show on Saturday, hopefully I'll get to meet you. Please do come up and say hello if you see me. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.